Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and it's time for another video in the iNav Pro Flash to Flight series. In the first video we covered the basic hardware setup and of course the flashing and in this video let's go into more interesting things like for example accelerometer and magnetometer calibration, so let's go! The calibration is of course available in the calibration tab and the most important part is of course to calibrate the accelerometer. The process takes six steps, however it's relatively simple and after some practice you will absolutely should not have any problems. The trick is to, you have to lay the flight controller inside your build down, hit calibrate accelerometer, wait until the confirmation message, move into the different orientation of the flight controller, hit the button again until all six steps were done. So let's do it just now for the flight controller I have inside. So calibrate accelerometer, okay, and now quad is in the first position, let's hit calibrate accelerometer, Processing and done. Now what I'm doing, I'm rotating the quad 180 degrees, hit calibrate accelerometer, try definitely not to move it. Sometimes you will lose one of the steps, this is not a problem, we can always cover that later. One more time, I rotated it 180, hit calibrate accelerometer again and we have two steps covered. And now it's time for the sides. One side, second side, third and fourth. The trick is that you do not have to really have it exactly to the tenths of the degrees uh, set up, uh, but you should not absolutely move your quad when it's in the in the position. When all six steps were successful, let's just hit OK because the config calibration of the accelerometer was updated and now it's time to hit save and reboot so we do not lose our progress. And now because we are setting up the quad with the magnetometer, it's time to talk about the magnetometer a little. So let me change the camera. In the majority of the cases, the magnetometer is located somewhere in the GPS unit you are using. And usually on the GPS unit you are using, you will see that there is an arrow telling you where the GPS unit should be facing so that the magnetometer is in the default uh, uh, position. And the interesting thing that default position is not zero. Uh, it's something like a standard that the default position when the arrow is facing forward of the quadcopter or a drone on the airplane, then it means it should be 270 flip. How to set it up? Very simple. Let's go to the configuration tab. And here in the board and sensor alignment, you will see that the by default we have the CW270 flip. So if your magn if your GPS unit is facing forward with the arrow forward, this is the correct uh orientation most probably you might have some this strange gps that has a magnetometer on the different angle if however your arrow is facing backwards that means we should subtract 200 180 degrees so because in my case the arrow is facing backwards you cannot really say it because it's under the tpu i have to set it to cw 90 flip so the rule of a tap if the arrow is facing forward 270 flip if the arrow is facing backwards it's 90 flip of course you can have any other orientation as you want, but this is not really 100% important right now. Let's hit save and reboot and let's talk about something else. There is something like a trend to install on the quads GPS and the magnetometer in the rear side tilted backwards because some say it's giving you the best reception when you are flying forward. I tell you that no, this is crap and this has absolutely no 
no reason to be believed and used for a couple of reasons. The reason number one, that when you are flying forward, you're not really interested of having the GPS antenna facing for, uh, upwards because then the accuracy is not really important. You need extra accuracy when you are trying to hold the position. When the quad is more or less level, then the antenna should be facing backwards. Second of all, if you have the GPS receiver and the magnetometer in the rear tilted, then it's up to you of finding exactly what are the values for the magnetometer orientation. Because if it's backwards uh, and it's tilted, then you have to manually set the roll, pitch and yaw, taking into consideration the order in which the axes are applied. And also uh, remember that you have to also add the flip option. So my advice is no, it's not really worth it. There is not a single good reason to have the GPS in the back tilted. Just install it flat with the level of the flight controller and trust me, you will be golden. Setup will be super simple because you will only have to set up the Mac orientation, usually either 90 flip or 270 flip and that's all. No need to worry and fight with things below that. And now there is one extra step we have to cover in this part of the video. And the step is that we have to inform enough that if the quad is tilting forward, it's really tilting forward. How to do it? We have to set up the flight controller orientation. Let's go to the setup tab and let's observe our model after resetting the Z axis. What will happen if I will tilt the quad forward? As you can see, it's correctly tilting forward. When I'm tilting this right side, the model also tilts to the right. When I tilt it to the left, it also tilts to the right. This means that the orientation of the flight controller is set up correctly. If, however, it was not set up correctly, it would be doing something like that. Now, let's see what's gonna happen when I will tilt the model forward while resetting the z-axis. I'm tilting forward, however, the INAP thinks that we are rolling to the right. That means that probably the orientation is 90 degrees off. I'm tilting to the back and guess what? It thinks that it's tilting to the left. Yes, uh, it's 90 degrees off because I set it 90 degrees off and the setting is over here in the board and sensor alignment. It depends on the flight controller you are using and how it was set up. If however every time your model is not really following on the setup tab with what you are doing with your model then this is the value you have to adjust. So in my case the correct value is zero your degrees. So let's save it and let's verify one more time on the setup tab. Tilting forward, moving forward, tilting to the right, moving to the right. Everything is just great. And now, and now it's time to do the magnetometer calibration. We are using magnetometer in this, uh, in this build, so we have to calibrate the magnetometer right now. So, how to do it? In the calibration tab, of course. Compass calibration button, because actually it's only a button, is located over here and it calls, yeah, guess how? Calibrate compass. Bear in mind, to correctly calibrate compass, you have to be far away from any sources of the magnetic fields. That means that probably doing the calibration in your house or even with the, on the, with the metallic watch on your hand is not the best idea. You have to do it in the place, in the environment where you will be flying. So it's actually suggested that to make the compass calibration in the field, either with the laptop uh, or by triggering the this with the stick command, but we will not cover the stick command. Today, today I will just try to keep the quad during the calibration as far as possible from any metals, and we will do calibration. 
After I will press the calibrate compass, I will have 30 seconds to move to rotate my quad and the magnetometer 360 degrees on every axis. So when I will switch the camera, so I will be able to show you, I will have to rotate it like that 360 rotate it like that 360 and rotate it like that 360. Simple? Simple, yeah. It's not really like a rocket science. So now, in the calibration, I'm gonna hit the calibrate compass and do exactly what I told you. 360 on the yaw, 360 on the roll and 360 on the pitch. If you were able to do all the movements before the timer went to zero, hold your quad without putting it on the ground or somewhere in your car. Wait until the process is over and then when it's over, it's over. And now we have filled the zero and the gain values for the Mac. And if more or less all the values are relatively close together, that means that probably the calibration was successful. In our case, they are maybe not perfect, but quite close enough. And that means that probably the magnetometer calibration was fine. We can save and reboot. And guess what? All of our sensors, at least the required for flight, were calibrated absolutely no problem. That covers today's video and in the next video we will probably worry about the mixer and the outputs. Yeah, I think it's time for the mixer and the outputs. So, until the next one, bye bye!